here. I've got a workout for you this morning that's mostly legs, some chest, and some core. So I'm going to warm all those areas up first with my foam roller. So we're going to start with releasing the quadriceps because definitely going to be working those to the front of my thigh. Rolling that out on the roller. It can be also done with a set of yoga tuna balls or some tennis balls. So this is getting my fascia ready to go. Helping reduce any muscular imbalance. Tension in there will help loosen that up a little bit, warm everything up a little bit, get it ready to work. So there's benefits to doing rolling before for sure. There's also benefits to doing it afterward. Helps you not be quite as sore for as long if you get sore. Helps with recovery, faster recovery. So that's kind of nice. Rolling the top of this thigh again. This is a, a roller. Could be a shorter one. Doesn't have to be the long one. Could be done with some tune-up balls or tennis balls. So if I find an area that's really, really, really tight, I might not just stay right on it. I might go a little below it or a little bit above it. Ninety seconds is. You know, a good start. You can work your way up to two or three minutes on a area, on an area. If you're really tense in an area, of course, you've got a little more time. Okay, move on to side number two. So, again, just rolling the top of my thigh. You can see I'm using my other knee. Or I can use my other foot to push me. And of course, while I'm doing this, I'm almost doing a little bit of a plank with my arms, which means, guess what, my shoulders and my arms are also warming up. So this is all a part of me preparing to do the workout. And I'm keeping my core pulled in tight to make sure I don't hurt my back and get sloppy and then have a problem with my back later. I could get sloppy as I come into big extensions. I don't want to do that. As I said, then you're actually getting a little bit of a core warm up too. Many benefits to this particular activity. All right, guys. So I am going to move on to do my glutes. So my hips, big powerhouse, hips, glutes area, big powerhouse for anything with the legs. So I'm on my right glute. I'm going to cross my right ankle over my left thigh if that's accessible. It, if it's not, like if you're like struggling to get it up there, just lay them down. You know, you might have the ability to get it up there someday. Maybe not today. That's okay. So ankle over thigh if possible. And then I'm leaning in the direction of that hip that I'm rolling. So make sure you don't lean away from it. Lean towards it. It can be done on the elbow, it can be done on the hand. And of course, this hand and wrist and shoulder get a little bit of a warm up while I'm doing this at the same time as well. If I have a spot that's super tight, but I can still take a deep breath, that's the key. If it's too intense, you can't take a deep breath, move away from it. But if I have a little bit extra tension, I might do some shorter range of motion, stay right on the or even just stay here at right. All right, switch side. My other glute, so if it's my, again, my left hip, I'm crossing left ankle over. And only if that's accessible. If not, then just leave it on the floor. Someday you might be able to cross that ankle, and maybe someday you won't. Not necessarily a goal. Everybody's hips are different. And we're rolling all over that glute on the outside towards the tailbone. 
This could also be done with yoga tuna balls or a tennis ball. There's some additional things you can do in the course of the ball. You can make some circles, kind of hard to do that on this roller, but just know there's different options with the balls. The other nice thing about the yoga tuna balls, this pretty hard, doesn't have much give. The yoga tuna balls, they do, they kind of they go in, if they touch the bone, they don't smash the bone, they don't bruise the bone. Um, so they kind of tuck in, in between your bone rollers, not so much. Pros and cons, <laughs> this roller gets a little bit more surface area at once, and they're very, very light. All right, so moving on. So I'm gonna go ahead and release the left and upper back a little bit, and then we're gonna go ahead and warm up with our dynamic warm up and get our workout started. So my left, I'm laying kind of on my armpit area. I'm gonna bend my knees, I'm gonna roll forward and backwards. So that can be really tender, so check in. If it's too much, move a little up or down, okay? You might eventually, after a few reps, be able to go right on that spot that's sore, or maybe not. So don't worry about it, it's all connected. So you're still helping this super, super sore spot, even if you're not right on top of it. We're gonna go up and down now, so we can front to back, and now I might lean a little more on the back of my shoulder. I might lean a little bit towards the armpit or even more towards the chest. I am going to work the chest a little bit today, so that's important. So I've got that tucked in on my upper pectoral area. Right, I'm going to do the other side. So again, I'm going to put your hands behind the head and roll forward and backwards. I'm going to roll up and down a little bit. I lean a little bit towards the back of the shoulder. A little bit of time on the armpit area. And then the pectoral, and I find that if I extend my arm, I'm able to get in there a little bit easier. All right. One more for you. And then on to our dynamic warm up. All right. So hands behind the head. Squeeze your elbows in, my rear end is on the ground. I'm going to lean over the roller. This roller is kind of a broad line-ish area. I get a little above that or a little bit below that. Not too far down, but I'm not way really down here on my lower back. In the middle of that, I'm leaning and then I'm coming up. Now again, remember my elbows are in 40 feet across, hands over the shoulder. I like the hands behind my head for a little neck support personally. But I'm not elbows out right now. Elbows are in. I'm going to round out that upper back a little bit. That's what we're trying to do right now. I might scooch it up just a little. So I'm going to take the shoulder blades. All right. And now I'm going to lift up and I'm going to roll out that upper back. Might lean a little left and right. Now I might let my elbows come out for a minute and let our chest and shoulder stretch as well. You know, notice it'll feel different if you're sort of rounded versus in a more neutral position with your upper back. Not right or wrong, just different. Check in with your core. Sometimes get too low and get some more sense of the lumbar. It gets to be a situation where you can hurt your low back. So check in with the core just in case you go too far. I am a, one of those people that say it's fine to roll out your low back as long as you're keeping the integrity of your core. You could come way down here on more of the lumbar, but keep that core tight. All right, and then the butt goes back down. One last stretch across chest and shoulders with the elbows open up. You can do a little twisting side to side. You'll notice the roller kind of go around. 
out your skin a little bit. I hurt some superficial tissues. Very good. All right, guys. So we're going to move on to our dynamic warm up next. So get ready for that. All right. So our dynamic warm up, we're going to warm up all of the things that we're planning on working during our workout. So let's begin. So we'll start with some squats. So let's go hands behind your head and coming into your basic squat. So the hands are behind the head. I call the prisoner squat. Hands are behind the head to remind you, keep your chest lifted as you stick your booty way out behind you, core tight. I'm also, again, getting a little bit of a opening across the chest and shoulders when I do this. Driving into my heels, you'll listen to your body. How deep should you be lunging or squatting, actually? Uh, so in this squat, maybe I'm just going to start off a little mini squat if my knees are not ready to go low. As you go, you might be able to go deeper and deeper. And we'll pause at the top. Let's bring the elbows in and out, in and out, shoulders, chest, warming up a little bit more. Again, we did a little warm up with those by what we were doing with the roller. We're just getting some more blood flow going here. All right, let's swing those arms out a little bit, a little bit bigger, check in with the shoulders, make sure that's okay for you. You might do some knee drives at the same time. That's almost like rubbing your belly and patting your head. So if you need to do one at a time, do the arm swings and then maybe do some knee drives separately. That is also okay. But if you're able to do both, go ahead and go for it. Eventually clasp your hands behind your back, interlace the fingers, lift the chest. Let's warm up the neck a little bit. Head rolls one way, ear to shoulder, and then chin to chest, and then ear to shoulder, and then chin to chest. Right, let's do some booty kickers. So you can keep that clasp with a hand if you'd like. Careful you don't kick your hand if you do, or you can let those arms go. Thighs, front of the thigh is warming up here. Let's come back to the front and do a little opening up of the hip. Up and around, up and around, up and around. All right, we will be doing some lunging activities. So we're gonna go ahead and warm up the legs in a lunge fashion. So let's do some alternating back lunges. So step into a lunge and then step forward. Step into a lunge and step forward. You can absolutely hold on if you need a little extra support for these. You can hold on to a wall or a chair. Step, step forward. Step, Oops. step forward. Step, step forward. Now to warm up the core a little bit, we might add a little rotation. So what I might do is turn away and around. As I step back, I turn over my front leg. I step front. I step back and I turn over my right leg, which is my front leg. And we just go back and forth. All right, guys. So the next time you step back with your left leg, Stay there. Put your left hand down. Reach your right hand way up high. And it's going to go in front of your right shin and reach towards your back foot, kind of like twister. So reach up. So my right foot is forward. Reach up with my right hand. I go around and towards my back foot. I rotate a little bit through my spine. I'm warming up my spine again. I'm almost rounding out just a little bit and then extending and opening and rounding out just a little bit and then extending and opening. Put the left knee down. I'm gonna circle out those hips a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some circles with my hips. Let's go the other way. All right.
right. And we'll switch sides. So left foot is forward, right foot is back. Right hand down, left hand up. I'm going to come in front of my shin and reach towards my back foot. And then inhale, reach up and do it again. And reach up and do it again. One more time, up, up, up and down. Put your right knee down and just put your hands down and we'll make some circles hips a few times each direction all right guys so we are going to move on and get ready to do our workout so our first exercise is going to be for our chest so if you have a set of dumbbells grab those that's what we're going to be mostly working with today is dumbbells so go ahead and grab a set of dumbbells um, these are going to be of us sort of a medium heavy to start so that you can really get your body warmed up and then as you go you might go heavier and if you don't have another set of weights to go heavier there's ways to make it harder which I will explain so when you're doing anything with the chest do make sure that you're keeping a 45 degree angle on those arms so no internal rotation that will hurt the shoulder so my elbows are actually closer to my body they don't have to be way, way close like this, but they're like, it's this 45. And then we draw a triangle up above the chest. So let's go ahead and lay down either on your bench or if you're on the floor, that is also fine. And we'll begin. So drawing that triangle, so we go up and down, up and down. Now, how can I make this harder if I don't have enough weight to make it challenging enough for myself? One way is to Pulse it out in the middle. So I kind of do a one and a half motion with my rep. Another way is to go super, 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 super slow. <laughs> and that is gonna make it much harder as well. So that is another option. And then the last option is to leave it kind of in the middle. We call it sort of the sticking point and you pulse it out at that challenging part right there. Be careful you're not bouncing. I'm just moving up an inch, down an inch, up an inch, down an inch. So sometimes this actually is nicer to the joint. So if you have joint issues that are not liking super heavy weight, you might choose to do this. All right. So that was it. So chest press, you do what makes sense to you in terms of making it a challenge. So we are going to move on. The next exercise is a Bulgarian split squat. So I'm going to put my toe up on a step or a bench if I have one. If not, you can take a stationary lunge, which I'll show in just a second. So my toe is up. And again, it doesn't have to be super high. If you have a bench, that's great. If you have just a step and it's only up a few inches maybe even six inches that is also okay my front foot i need to make sure it's in a position that i'm got my weight in my heel so that i am working my glute big time now you know why we warm those glutes up all right so let's do it and again if you don't have a bench just stationary lunge up and down so let's begin so toe up if you have something to put your toe up on down and up it could be a step stool it could be a bench could be anything. If you don't have any weight or you don't have enough weight to make it challenging enough, double pulse is an option. Core tight, guys. Weight in the heels. I'm keeping it in the back of my leg and glute mostly. Down, down, up. How can I make it harder? Super slow. <laughs> or find that place where it's most challenging and I pulse it out there. So you don't always have to go up and wait to give yourself a challenge. Switch sides, guys. So right to the other side. If it's hard enough, just basic reps, then you do that. If it's not, again, pulse, pulse up, or super slow, or pulse, 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 pulse at the bottom. 
or in the middle-ish, I guess. It's kind of more like in the middle, but down towards close to the bottom of the movement and rest. All right, guys, so we are gonna go back to a chest exercise. We're gonna do flies now. So fly is short for butterfly. So it's like a butterfly flapping its wings. You're not gonna let your arms go past your body though, okay? So if you're on the floor, it's almost impossible to go past your body. If you're on a bench, it's easy to go too far. So really pay attention to that. All right, so palms face each other, have a little bend in the elbows, and we go out and in. I can still see my hands in my peripheral vision. If I cannot, I've gone too far, guys, so keep that in mind. Again, this is not going to be hard enough for you with whatever weight you have. Pulse, pulse, up, pulse, pulse, up, or super slow reps, or find that point. I see it's a sticking point, so it's that part where you're like, oh, I could get stuck here. That's where you stay and pulse it out. Let's go about five more seconds and we rest. All right. So we're gonna work the lower abdominals here. So if you have a bench, you can stay on the bench and grab the top of the bench. If you're on the floor, you might wanna to move to something that you can grab onto as well. It could even simply be a dumbbell that you're holding onto. It just helps stabilize the lower back. So we're gonna do a few different versions of lower abdominal work. So the first one is to do a slow controlled roll up. So the knees roll towards the chin. For some people that doesn't work, so really pay attention. If it doesn't, then maybe you lift the hips more upright. I'll show you what I mean. So again, if you have a bench, I recommend grabbing onto the top of the bench, but you're not yanking on that, so be careful. Don't turn it into an arm exercise. I'm just holding on to stabilize. So if possible, slow, controlled, towards my chin, like that. If it hurts your back to go into that deep reflection, think more of lifting up. Or you might do a combination of both. And again, if I'm on the floor, I might hold onto a dumbbell or a chair or something behind me. All right, let's begin. So knees slowly roll up and down. Now eventually, I might put a weight or weighted ball underneath my heels, between my hips or my hips and my heels, and that will certainly make it harder. But for right now, just really slow and controlled. You don't want to add anything until you've really mastered the basics. So if I needed more, I could put the ball there, but if then I'm suddenly having to swing to do it, then that's not okay. Slow and controlled, guys. And again, I'm not yanking with my arms. Five more seconds here. And again, hips could go more straight up if that's more appropriate for your back. Okay, rest. All right, guys. We are moving on and coming back to our first one, which was that chest press. I'm going to grab a little bit more weight. And maybe you will too. But again, if not, if you don't have any more weight to add, then of course you just add some of those things I mentioned. And I'm going to do those again for you. Chest press, so that's palms at a 45, kind of facing your thighs. If you're on the floor, maybe you choose to come into a bridge. Hey, if you're on the bench, maybe you do. All right, here we go, begin. Chest press, so my glutes get to work too if my hips are lifted. Chest press up and down. It's too easy. Remember, I could pulse, pulse at that sticking point. Or I could take a super, 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 super slow rep. Or I could pulse, pulse, pulse at that sticking point. Or I could do any variation 
a variety of all of those things. So I can feel myself challenged by the end of my set, which is now. All right, back to our Bulgarian split squats, or again, if you don't have a bench or something to put your foot up on, it's a basic squat lunge, split squat. <laughs> so toe is up. I'll go ahead and do the basic version this time with you if you don't have something to put your foot up on. Weight is still a lot in the front heel, even in this stationary version of a lunge with no foot lifted. So let's go down and up. A lot of weight still in that front leg, but I'm not leaning over it. Down and up. Down and up. Now remember again, a little harder if you double pulse or you take a super, super, super slow version of this. Or if you pulse it out at the bottom, that's going to make it hard too. Sometimes you don't even need added weight when you've got these pulses. Let's switch sides. Go right to it. Basic version, down and up, down and up, double pulse is an option, super, super, super slow, or pulse, pulse, pulse it out at the bottom. Five more seconds, guys. Done. Okay flies so butterfly let's do it little bend in those elbows chest lifted slow so once you have the exercise mastered the movement i recommend you really start to focus in on what you're trying to work Got the movement down. Now tune in. So I know I'm wanting to work mostly my chest, some shoulder. So if I'm feeling it someplace else, I might need to adjust something. I can get more out of it by intentionally contracting the pectoral muscles. When I come to the top, I squeeze my chest. And then I slowly come down. Super slow is an option. Pulsing it out is an option. And of course, focus. When I come to the top, I squeeze those muscles tight. All right, we have five seconds. And rest. Okay, guys. So again, on your back. Holding on to something is what I recommend. You could also go arms down your sides if you're on the floor, but I feel like it's hard to leave your neck and shoulders out of it. So if you can grab onto something, if that's accessible to you, please do that. If you have a bench, again, light hold. You're not yanking on it. This time, lower abdominals, legs are going to either be straight up. And when I say straight, they do not have to be totally straight. They can be a little bent or knees can be bent a lot. Now I'm intentionally lifting my hips straight up. We, last time we did the knee roll, and then I said if your back didn't like that, you could do more of a lift up and down. So this time we are purposefully lifting hips up and down, and it might only be like a centimeter. I'd rather you don't even lift, like you just make the effort, than start swinging, guys. So maybe you lift a millimeter off the bench. Focus. What am I trying to work? If it now becomes an arm exercise, then I'm doing something wrong. Okay, so focus. Hips lift straight up and down. So these are all more of a lower abdominal focus. So in terms of strength of the core muscles, most people's lower part of their abdominals are the least strong. The obliques are typically next. And upper abdominals are what want to typically do the work because most people's upper part of their abdominals 
tend to be the strongest. So I'm gonna start from our weakest point, which is our lower abdominals. And as we continue this workout, we'll go to the obliques next, and then the upper abdominals last. Now, of course, you can't isolate per se. I mean, even when I'm working my lower abs, my upper abs are involved. Go ahead and rest. It's not like they're separate muscle groups, but there is a way to focus, as we are right now, on the lower part of the abdominals. So that's what we were just doing. Okay, we are on to our last set of chest press, and I'm gonna go up one more time and wait. So you can too or not. So this is our last time, so do what's appropriate for you. So again, if you were on the floor, you could come up into a bridge. You could even do a single-legged bridge if you wanted and just do that holding. So go ahead and begin. I'll let you know when you're halfway if you're making this choice. Slow and intentional movements. And then contract the chest at the top. You've mastered the exercise now, so can you really focus on contraction? Remember, you could double pulse. And if you've got one leg lifted, you might notice that, guess what, your stabilizing muscles in your core are working. Switch legs if you've got one up, that's halfway. Now again, on these, pulse, pulse, pulse at that sticking point is one option. Super, super, super slow is an option. And of course, you know, you have the option of double pulsing. Or just doing your regular reps if that's hard enough for you with what weight you've chosen now. Okay, rest. Okay, last set of Bulgarian split squats. Toe up if you have that option. If not, then stationary lunge. Here we go. Chest lifted, option to double pulse, option to stay in a pulse at the bottom, option to take super slow reps. You may not need to do any of that. If you upped your weight, maybe regular reps are just fine for you to get you challenged enough. Let's switch sides, down and up. Down and up. Regular reps, double pulse reps. Pulse it out at the bottom. Super slow reps. You do you, guys. Keep your knee and toe pointing the same direction. Rest. Okay, last set of flies. So nice and slow and controlled. Option for a bridge or no bridge, core tight. Focus, slow, intentional movement. Contract at the top. So double pulse these, as you know. You could take them really, really slow. You could take a pulse at that sticking point and just stay there for several or all the rest of the reps. Contract at the top when you come up, guys. Slow. Five seconds. Rest. Okay. Last lower abdominal exercise and it is going to be really important that you focus on the low back here so we're going to start with our feet up holding on again arms down to your sides if you don't have another option press that low back super flat my knees are going to be bent and i'm going to start to move my heels towards the ground or the bench but i'm not going to let my low back come off Okay, so no space back here, press down, and then the legs move. I may or may not touch the ground or the bench, 
because at the point where you want to lift that back up off the bench, you're done. You don't get to go anymore. So if you start to feel space come back there, you are done. Now this is our kind of basic version. If I need less, I will alternate my legs. If I needed more, I could extend one leg at a time out, or and this is the hardest, both legs out. But if I start to take that back up off that bench, I am done. I don't get to go anymore. That defeats the purpose of the exercise. Press that low back so flat. Focus. What are you trying to work? If you're not feeling it in the lower region of your belly, you got to change something. Five more seconds. And we rest. All right. You guys made it through your first round. Awesome work. So go ahead and grab some water and then we'll move on. You guys ready to move on? Do it. So we've got some upper body work again, some lower body work, and some more core. So our next exercise is going to be, if you have two dumbbells, grab two dumbbells for a pullover. It can be done on the bench, floor, or as you can see, there's a ball behind me. I'll show you all of those options. So a pullover works your lats and chest. Yes, your triceps are involved as a stabilizer, but we are going to move right on to some tricep work right after. So make sure you're not making the first exercise a tricep exercise. The first one is pullovers. Arms are going to be going over the head like this. And you're going to listen to your shoulders. So if you go too far, you might hurt your shoulder. So maybe you only go till you line up with your ears. And again, we're going to be over the head. Whatever range your shoulders say is okay. Second exercise is going to be tricep skull crushers. So that is not over my head. It comes right next to my temples. So first exercise, two dumbbells are going to go over the head. Second exercise is going to be skull crushers right next to the temples. I will show you on the bench and then I'll show you some options too. So our first exercise again, skull crushers, or no, <laughs> pull over. Second exercise is skull crushers. So if you have uh, two dumbbells that are flat sided, that would be my recommendation. If you don't, just be careful they don't slip against each other. You're gonna press the flat sides of these weights together and we come over the head. So. You're going to be really paying attention to your shoulders and your limit of range is going to be based on your shoulders and how they feel. So for everybody, that's going to be different. So you're gonna engage the lats, those are the muscles we rolled out on the roller earlier, underneath the armpit, so pull those down, contract those, so you don't let your arms go too far. Now my core is involved in this exercise, guys. If I let it go, I'm probably gonna go too far. Now, of course, if it wasn't enough for any reason, I could double pulse. And you'll notice I'm going pretty slow, but you could go super slow also to make it harder. Or as always, pulse it out at what I would call the sticking point. Core tight and we rest. Now, right into the second exercise, which is skull crushers. Separate your weights, bend your elbows, and you go right next to your temples. So maybe you're using the same weight or maybe you need to switch. So sometimes when you do these two exercises back to back, you either need to switch to a lighter weight or you need a break briefly before you start these, which is fine. So you take it if you need it. If you need more, of course, double pulse or take it slower or pulse it out at what the, we call the sticking point. Or if you need less, you could alternate. That way one arm actually gets to rest for a moment every time. And we rest. All right. So again, that could be done on a bench. It could be done on the floor if you did not have a bench. And next time I'll do them on the ball so you can see what that will look like. Now we're going to go ahead and come up and do some leg work. So let's go ahead and come into a side lunge. 
So you're going to step into a side lunge. You'll notice my knees and my toes are pointing the same direction. I step together and then I step and then I step together. Side to side. And it doesn't have to be a gigantic step. Inner thigh on my straight leg is actually working a bit and getting a bit of a stretch. So we go back and forth. If your knees don't like this for any reason, you might decide to not step into it and just go back and forth instead. You're still getting great work. And rest. All right. So we're moving on to core. So obliques. As I mentioned earlier, the second least strong <laughs> um, part of the abdominals typically. So let's focus on those next. So we're gonna do a side plank this first time. So our side plank can be done on the knees, just like this. It can be done in a staggered stance with the feet or stacked. And of course, any of this can be done on an elevated surface as well. So come up into your side plank, make your choice. And then we can always add things. I could add a hip dip. I'm not crunching into my shoulder. I'm keeping my shoulder the same. I'm engaging my lats. So I'm actually protecting my shoulder. I could do a, I call this a clamshell. So that working that hip at the same time with a straight or a bent leg. So the clamshell works a certain portion of the hip. Straight legged would work a little different part of the hip. I won't go into specifics, but you'll probably feel it. And then you feel that bottom hip and oblique working too, I would imagine. I'm hoping so. So check in and make sure that's true. And again, of course, I could do staggered. I could still do the hip dip. I could still do a leg lift. Let's switch sides. So second side option on the knees. Bottom of the week working, check it out. Not crunching to the shoulder, push away from the earth, engage the shoulder blade behind you. Add whatever you like, clamshell leg lift try it if it's too much back it off hip dip but none of that feels like enough staggered stance maybe also with a leg lift maybe also with a hip dip stacking the feet is the hardest try to keep your neck neutral don't let it dangle down like this You'll end up feeling it in your neck and your traps if you do that. Everything stacked, core tight, squeeze the glutes, rest. Okay, we are back to the pullovers. And this time, as I promised, I will show you how it would look on a ball. Now, be aware that when you add an unstable environment, it's harder. So I'm gonna actually use slightly less weight. So I know it's gonna be harder, so I'm gonna take care of myself. You may not need less weight. You'll see when you get there. So my hips are lifted. I'm pressing my weights together. I'm engaging my lats and then I go. You're gonna join me if you haven't already. Pause the video if you need to pause and start when you're ready. That's the nice thing about these videos is if you need a break, you just press pause and you take your break. Be honest with yourself. So let's involved, chest involved, core involved, and yes, the triceps are a stabilizer, but that shouldn't be what's moving the weight. We'll do the triceps isometrically as soon as we're done with our pullovers. We switch to skull pressures which is triceps. All right, right to those skull crushers, guys. So here we go. 
Elbows bend and extend. Bend and extend. Elbows point towards the ceiling. I need more. I could double pulse. I could pulse it out at the bottom if I really need a lot more. And I could go super, super, super slow. If I needed less, I would alternate my arms so one arm is getting a bit of a break. And rest. Awesome. Okay. So we're back to those side lunges. Now you could add a double pulse to these if it was too easy, just like anything else. So that would look like this, pulse, pulse, step together, pulse, pulse, step together. Go ahead and join me if you haven't already. Of course, if your knees or hips don't like the step out, then you could even double pulse, keeping your feet stationary. And as you did with the upper body, if you really feel like you need a lot more, do 10 or so pulses on one side, and then maybe 10 or so pulses on the other side. As I said, you don't always have to add weight or even reps. Sometimes if you're short on time, doing something to make it harder, like pulse, pulse, pulsing it out, is the answer. and we rest. All right, guys, fantastic job. So we are going to move on. So we're gonna do some side crunches on the ball now. So I'm gonna show you the feet, and then I'm gonna to have to put my feet against the wall because that's how they need to go. So pretend I have a wall here. So the leg that is closest to the ball, that foot is forward. And then when I roll over, of course, it's going to be boom. So I'm going to be over here. So I have a wall for my feet so I don't slip. So our basic version, hands behind the head. You need less, hands across the chest. You need more, arms overhead like you're diving. So let's begin. So make sure that ball is in a position where you can actually move. So if it's too high, you're gonna run into the ball. If it's too low, you're gonna be going too far over the ball and your feet might even come off the wall. Or you could you know, take it into your back. So play with it until you find that perfect spot where you're feeling the side working, your side, those obliques on the top side mostly. Bottom side is also working to a certain degree because you have to stabilize on the ball. And switch sides. So go right to it. Roll over. You'll start when you get there. So up and down. Hands behind the head. Basic version. Little less, hands across the chest. You need more arms overhead. Working those obliques. Keep going. You need a break, you take it. Otherwise, keep going for five more seconds. And rest. All right, so we are back to our first one. I'll show you the floor version of this exercise. So if you've got a floor, which we all do, <laughs> you can take this to the floor. 
So as always, I love to come up into a bridge so that my glutes get to work too, my core gets to work too. Press those weights together. And then we take our pull over. So you could do this in a bridge and really isolate those glutes also and the core gets involved just like this. Still you could double pulse. Still, you could go super slow. Still, you could pulse it out at the bottom. Now, if I wanted to get really in the core, I lift my feet up, maybe even take my feet a little bit away from me, kind of like that first exercise we were doing on the bench. A little lower abdominal focus. Be careful, guys. Press that low back flat. Of course, you could just take it to a basic version, which is to just leave your feet on the floor. All right, rest. If you need a break, you take a break. Let's go right into those triceps if you can, though. Maybe I'll come back into a bridge, though. Maybe even a one-legged bridge. So isometric hold up if you're doing the bridge. So we're not gonna try to go up and down at the same time. That might be a bit much. Focus, maybe you alternate your arms if you start to fatigue. Focus on the back of those arms. If you've got one leg up, switch guys, we're halfway. Woo, these are starting to get heavy. Good work. Mm-hmm, and we are done. Thank goodness. <laughs> That last set was tough. Okay, so we are back to the side lunge. Now, if you don't have any weight, there's ways you can make this challenging, even without weight, or if the weight you were using was too much, just know that this is an option for you. You could take no weight, boom, and then shuffle it. Let's do it. So again, maybe you have weight in your hand even, so you add the shuffle, maybe. You could double pulse it, or Triple pulse it, gets the heart rate up whenever you add something where you're shuffling or skipping. So, if you need a little cardio, shuffle. Again, you could be holding on to weight here also. Just wanted to show you, not absolutely necessary. So if you're off somewhere where you don't have weight, you could do these. Rest. All right, so obliques, last one. We're gonna add weight if you have it. Side bend can be done with a single dumbbell to your side like this, taking it over. Core tight, take it over. Isolating those obliques on that opposite side. I could double pulse. I could stay over here and pulse it out. Listen to your back. If your back does not like it, probably a little less weight. Or change the angle of the lean. Maybe you're pulling too much on that back. Maybe you need to take it a little slight bit back or a slight bit forward. Always tune in. What am I trying to work? Make sure that is what's working. Five more seconds. Okay, let's do the other side. Pull the core in tight. I'm double pulsing, but I don't have to. If I need to just go regular, one regular pulse or one regular rep, then you do that. Or I could pulse, 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 pulse it out at the bottom to really isolate. Rest. All right, guys. 
You made it through our second group of exercises. So grab some water and then we'll do one more round of exercises. All right, we're on to our last group of exercises, focusing a lot on the shoulders now and some glutes and more of the upper abdominals. So grab your weights. We're gonna start off with some alternating shoulder presses. So knees are a little bent. One arm goes up, the other arm goes up, okay? So we're passing back and forth like this. They actually keep moving. Now, if you need a little less than this, you could let one rest, go up and down and up and down. If you haven't started already, go ahead and join me. Now, variations on this. Keep going. If you, you're all set, keep going. If it feels better in your shoulders or your elbows, maybe you go palms facing your body. Okay. And again, they can pass each other. If it feels Fine in your body to go palms forward, you go palms forward. And if you need something in between, you take more like a 45 on that angle of the arm. Keep going guys, core is tight. Make sure you don't tuck under, your butt stays sticking out just a little bit, neutral curves in the spine, rest. All right, so we are gonna move on to more of the front of the shoulder. Now, a lot of times people do a front raise for the front of the shoulder, but I am going to have you do what I call a V raise. So a front raise would be palm facing down like this. For some people, this will work just fine, but it does really kind of create this internal rotation of the shoulder, which can be pinchy for a lot of you. So I recommend for the safest route, squeeze those shoulders back, and you draw a V with those arms, just like this. And it's chest level, guys, so we're not coming way up over the head. I'm definitely not swinging. Notice I'm coming to my thighs, so I'm not coming here and then doing some big swinging motion. Now, if I need less, I could alternate. If I needed more, I could double pulse. If you feel it in your neck, I definitely recommend alternating. Keep your head on top of your body. So many of us live kind of with the head forward. Can you pull it back and keep nice neutral curves in your spine? I think you can. Rest. All right, so we are moving on to a bridge can be done on the floor, can be done on top of an unstable environment like a basu. It could be also done on a ball, which I'll demonstrate next. Now, if you do not have a basu, just do this on the floor, it's fine. But if you do have one, or a vibe plate or something that's wiggly, you can do that. Now, you could do this with both feet on the floor or the basu. For some of you, that's gonna be plenty. For most of us, we need a little more. So let's go one foot in the air. So we're isolating the glute of the leg that's down. Now, if you're doing that and you're like, yep, I need a little bit less, ankle over thigh gives you some support for the knee and the lower back. So that might be what you need. Anytime you're in an unstable environment, the body has to work a little bit harder to stabilize, obviously, to get more bang for every single buck, every single rep. More bang for your buck, I say. It's always good if you're, especially if you're you know, short on time for your workout. Let's switch sides. So option, foot up, check in with the back, check in with the knee. If you need some more support, don't be afraid to cross the ankle over the thigh. Or if that still seems like too much, put both feet down, it's fine. It's into your body. It's gonna be different every day. Don't assume it's gonna be the same every day. You might sleep funny and maybe your body says, nope, I need more support today. And that is just fine. All right, so how do you isolate more of the upper abdominals? 
generally speaking, any kind of crunching is a little bit more upper abdominal focused. So if I'm on the floor and I'm crunching my chest towards the ceiling, I'm gonna be focusing more on these upper part of my abdominals. Yes, everything else is also working, but the upper abdominals have to work harder. So let's go ahead and do that. So we go up and down, up and down, chest to ceiling. I am not trying to curl my chest towards my thighs on this one. I'm not working on flexion the way that I did on that very, very, very first one, which was a lower abdominal focus. Now, I'm keeping a neutral curve in my lower back. That means I'm not necessarily trying to press my low back flat on the floor. Although if my lower back needs more support, I might actually do that. I am pulling the pit of my belly into my spine though. And I know that seems crazy, but believe it or not, that doesn't mean you have to flatten your back out. It does take some focus, guys. I'm not saying it's easy, but pull the pit of the belly into the spine without flattening the back, unless, again, you need that additional support. And I could stay at the top, pulse, pulse, pulse. So just like any of our other exercises, you pulse it out, it's gonna be harder. And notice I'm not going fast. And honestly, the slower I go, the more challenging it's going to be, just like any other weight training exercise. Pulse it out at the top, as I mentioned, or double pulse, or just slow it down. It's gonna be harder. And we rest. Okay, guys, back to the alternating shoulder presses. Now, on these, you can change it up a little bit. So the last time we passed, so they actually passed each other, right? Okay, I told you if you needed less, one could go up and then you kind of pause with the other one down, okay? We could make it harder in some ways by starting with them up and one is always up. So give it a try with me, go ahead and begin. So that top arm is also working. Now what you do not want is to have this arm start to get ooh, fall down. If it's up, I mean, it is up. It is reaching towards the sky, reaching towards the ceiling. So the arm is as straight as you can keep it. If that is not possible, then I don't suggest this one necessarily or lighten the weight. So if you cannot keep that arm pretty darn straight up there, I recommend lighter weight or go back to this one that we were doing earlier. So listen to your body. What do you really need? Okay to go down and wait and work on form. Five more seconds, guys. Pull the core in, stick your butt out, rest. So what I mean by stick your butt out is oftentimes when you start to get fatigued in those shoulder presses, this happens. That's a really good way to hurt your back. Please don't do that. V raise front of the shoulder. So same thing before, as we did before, or maybe you want a little challenge to stand on one leg. You'll notice anytime you take a leg away, or if you sit down and take both legs away, whatever's working has to work a little bit harder and it's more isolated. You get to also work on some stability in the ankle and the knee and the hip on that leg that's down. Core gets to work, switch sides, especially if I alternate sides. I don't know if you can see that, maybe, maybe not. I might need to be a little bit leaner, but <laughs> My core is firing when I lift one side, the other side of my, on my core is firing to keep me stable. I can feel it. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. <laughs> All right, rest, okie doke. So we have a bridge again. This time I'm gonna use the ball. Again, if you don't have a ball or a basu, that's okay, just do it on the floor. Maybe someday you'll get a ball and 
you'll get to do it with the ball or the basu. But for the meantime, just do your basic one here. So again, if I'm on the ball, I might do it with two feet. I'm on the floor, I might do it with two feet. If I am on the ball or the basu, I might do it with one. Now the ball is significantly harder than the basu, so be aware of that. You might need some support ankle over thigh. You might do fewer reps. It's harder for sure. But do what you can. And again, if you're on the floor, just keep going. If you need less, I'm going to go ahead and put both feet back on the ball. I need a little bit less. Switching sides. And again, ankle over thigh will give you some support. See that ball moving around. It's a lot harder than the basu and certainly a lot harder than the floor. <laughs> Five more seconds. And rest. Okay. Crunches on the ball is an option to isolate a little bit more of the upper abdominals. Same thing, chest to ceiling. Okay, I'm not rounding towards my thighs. I'm lifting up. And again, everything is working, especially when I'm in an unstable environment. My body is trying to stabilize on this ball. Anytime you're doing a basic crunch or crunch on a ball or a crunch on the basu, you're going straight up and down. It's more of an upper abdominal isolation. And most of us are stronger in this upper abdominal region. So we're able to do more reps or it's easier. So maybe you need more. Maybe you take your arms over your head like you're diving or maybe just one arm over the head. If you need some support, sometimes wrapping the other one behind your head is the answer. Keep going. If you need to rest, just rest for a moment and start again. Otherwise, keep going 10 more seconds. and we rest. All right, guys. We have one more set of alternating shoulder presses. So grab your weights. Option to do these on one leg. Again, it's gonna make it harder. So if it was challenging enough or you're not ready for an additional challenge, leave both feet on the floor, not a problem. Let's do it. Begin. Alternating. Remember, you could do one up and let the other one kind of rest on your shoulder. You could try both up, and one is always working because it's up. That's harder for sure. Okay, let's switch legs. If you've got one up, let's do the other side. Keep going with those arms. Last set, give yourself a challenge, but with good form. And see, I just kind of fell out, so maybe I put a tippy-toe down. I'm still doing some great stabilizing work, even with a tippy-toe down. Five more seconds, guys. Done. Okay. Last time, V-raise. Option one leg, of course. Here we go. Squeeze those shoulder blades together, front of the shoulders, lifting those weights. Squeezing the shoulder blades together so that I have a lot of support inside the joint. Again, you could alternate these arms if you start to feel it in your traps. That's the muscles that connect up into your neck or in your actual neck itself. Let's switch legs if you have one up, other side. Five seconds and rest. Okay, so 
You could do your bridge on a basu. You could do it on a ball. So I'll show you the basu next. You could add some resistance with a dumbbell or a weighted bag or a ball. So I'll start off just showing you a basic version on top of this basu again. And then I'll add some weight just so you can see what that would look like. And again, this could be done on the floor. So we've done this before on the basu, that's what it would look like. If you wanted to add a dumbbell, hold it, but set it on that hip that's down. If you have a bag, it might lay across the whole lap. You could find it tucked into that little hip right there, but you'll need to hold it so it doesn't fall off. A big bag, sandbag, and just kind of lay on your lap. And again, check in, do you need some support? Ankle over the thigh, perhaps, and don't forget, doing these on the floor is also fine. You're getting great work, even on the floor. You don't have to have a ball suit or a ball. But it's fun to mix it up. Let's switch sides. A leg up, weight on the opposite hip bone, and I'm holding it there. If I need some support, ankle over thigh. Focus, what am I working? I'm trying to work the glute, the butt muscle on the down leg, the one that's on the basu or on the floor or the ball. If that's not what I'm feeling, check in, why not? Do I need to tuck my pelvis? Is it in my back? Am I not engaging my core? Is my foot too close or too far away? Rest. All of those things will affect how you feel it and where you feel it. Okay, last upper abdominal. I'm gonna do it on the basu. If you have one, go ahead and grab it. Same thing, focusing on chest to ceiling. There we go. So definitely isolating the upper abdominals when I go just straight up and down. Now if you are on the floor or on a basu, you could add some lower abdominals by doing a knee drive. So upper and lower working at the same time. I could turn it into a twist, and then I'm working upper, lower, and guess what, obliques also. I could just go side to side, upper and obliques, without the knee drive. And again, lower abdominals are working also, stabilizing me on the basu. Can't leave them out, but more fibers of the upper abdominals are working. Keep going, guys. And again, if you're on the floor, I could also do a knee drive. I could alternate. And then all of those parts of my core are working. Focus, what am I working? If I feel it in my neck, I probably need to change something. If I feel it in my back, I might need to take a rest and then start again. Or focus, do I need to press my low back flatter? Or maybe I need to come into more of a neutral spine. So a little bit of a curve in the low back. Five more seconds and we'll be done. And rest. Okay, so we're gonna stretch. Very important, do not forget to cool down, stretch at the end of your workout. Really, really important. Um, so it's telling your body you're done. It's down-regulating your system. So you can actually come into more of a parasympathetic state. That's the state where you are recovering, which means your muscles get to heal from what you just did. Go ahead and come forward, ankle over thigh. So if you have something to sit on, go ahead and do that. If not, then this can be done on the floor like this. Figure four, ankle over thigh, reach through the legs, catch the hamstring or your shin. I'm gonna come back up here so I can talk to you guys and focus a little bit more on you. So right glute stretching right here, right ankle is over the thigh. We work those. 
So going back to what I was saying, down regulating. So we spend a lot of our lives in fight or flight. We spend a lot of our lives um, riled up, you know, like focused on getting more, doing more. This stretching is down regulating, giving your body an opportunity to heal. And as I was mentioning before, working out, it's work. Working out is work. It's good work and your body will get stronger, but only if you also give yourself an opportunity to heal. So how you build muscle is you slightly break down the tissue, slightly break down the muscle fibers. They regrow and get stronger that way. But if you don't give yourself an opportunity to rest, recover, you're just breaking down, just breaking down, not building back up. Switch legs. So on my soapbox about stretching and myofascial release and taking time to sleep and rest, recover, nap, meditate, all so, so, so important. So I've had a lot of people ask me about this kind of thing, that working out is work. It's hard work. It's not easy. So you have to also give yourself the opportunity to recover. All right, so if you're sitting on something, go ahead and extend one leg out. We're gonna get the back of that extended leg. Okay, another way you can do this is to do this standing, coming forward, or putting your foot up on something and coming forward. It's all the same. As long as you're keeping a long spine, notice I'm not rounding. At first, my toe is pulled back. So again, it can be done on the floor. You can do this sitting. My spine is long, all of these. All right, now point away. So point the toe and come a little deeper. Standing, sitting, or with your foot elevated all the same. Or you might try one or the other and one might work better for you. Let's switch sides. So first, the toe is pulled back. If that causes you any nerve issues, so sharp pain coming down the leg, like sciatica type pain or numbness, then don't pull the toe back, actually. Just leave it neutral. Okay, but if it's okay, toe pulls back. Long spine, all right, now everybody point the toe away. Okie doke. So we definitely work the chest, finding a place to stretch your chest against a wall or a pillar, let's do that. So you're gonna have like a 90-ish degree angle on that arm. Place it against a wall or a corner. Lean in and then just slightly away. So it's my right arm up, my right foot is forward. I'm leaning just slightly forward and turning just slightly to the left. It is not a back twist. If that's all you're feeling, you're probably twisting too far. Chest and shoulder, if you feel a pinch in your back, Try adjusting the angle of the arm. Maybe it needs to be straighter. Maybe it needs to be higher. Maybe it needs to be lower. If you do any of my workouts on a regular basis, I probably sound like a broken record. Check in. What am I trying to stretch right now? If I'm not feeling it there, something needs to change. Or for some reason, it might not be the right stretch for you today. But try playing with the angle of the arm first. Left side, let's switch to see if you can find a position that stretches the chest and the shoulder. Once again, that might mean it needs to be higher or lower or straighter. If you're feeling it pinching in the back, try adjusting. All right, guys, we've got one more for you. We did do a lot of abdominal work today, so I'm gonna have you stretch your abdominals a little bit, lay down on your belly, elbows go a little bit in front of you. And from here, it's like you're trying to drag yourself forward. 
not trying to bend my body in half. I'm thinking more of lengthening the front part of my belly. If I need a little more, I could press into my hands and press up. But again, I'm not trying to do too much and definitely not a pinch in the low back. What I want to feel is a stretch in my belly region. All right, guys. Woo! You did it. <laughs> All right. Have the most fantastic day, and I hope to see you guys real soon. Bye.